In this video, we're going to take a look at what influences the rates of different types of reactions. So the things that influence reaction rates are temperature. So if you think about it, if we want things to react more quickly, we usually heat them up. And typically, if we increase the temperature of a reaction 10 degrees, it will double the reaction rate, so it'll make it go twice as fast. That's not always accurate, but it's a good rule of thumb. The next thing that we can do is increase the concentration of the reactants. And when we do that, that allows us to um, have more of the chemical in there that we want to react. The next thing we can talk about is surface area, and there, with that, there's more area for the reaction to occur, and so it makes it go faster. And then the last thing we can talk about are catalysts and enzymes, and we'll get into it a little bit more uh, later on. Every reaction is different, and each one has its own reaction rate. Some of them happen very quickly, um, things like the... Uh, bathtub video when we looked at the alkali metals and reactions with water those are almost immediate but some happen really slowly over long periods of time things like rusting and that sort of thing so and it has to do with how the reaction occurs and we're going to talk about how that happens with something called collision theory so what collision theory says is that reactions happen when molecules collide with each other. So obviously they have to, to bump into each other to make the reactions happen. But it has to, collisions have to happen under the right circumstances. So they only happen if the molecules collide with enough energy and if they collide with the right orientation. So if you look at the effective collision little picture here, before the collision, you can see that an atom's approaching a molecule, and then in the middle, you can see they bump into each other, and after the collision, the two green atoms have joined, and the red and the blue uh, molecule go away as a separate molecule. With an ineffective collision, they bump into each other. In this one, they don't have the right orientation because the two green parts of the molecule have to bump into each other in order to have that reaction occur. And so if they don't bump into each other in the right place, then the reaction won't happen. The green atom can only react with the other green atom in that molecule. Um, the other thing that has to happen is if they don't bump into each other with enough energy, then that reaction won't occur. All right, so let's look at how those relate to the things that we just talked about. With temperature, what happens is we're going to, temperature affects what's called kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion of an object, so of a molecule in this case. And if you have more uh, kinetic energy, the collisions that are taking place, more of them will have enough energy to have an effective collision. The other thing, another thing is concentration. Think about being in a, a room with 10 people versus being in a room with 100 people. If you're in the same size room, you're more likely to bump into the, to somebody else if you're in a room with 100 people than you are in a, if you're in a room with 10 people. So if you have more particles in that same volume, you have more collisions occurring. With surface area, that increases the accessible area for the collisions, so it's more likely that particles will bump into each other with the right orientation. There's more area exposed where the reactions can occur. So the other thing are catalysts and enzymes, and you may have learned about these in biology enzymes particularly. <clears throat> we know that catalysts speed up a reaction. Enzymes do the same thing. And what happens is they lower the amount of energy that is required in order for the reaction to take place. And so there are more effective collisions coming from that. 